My name is Omar Tom, commonly known as OT, co-founder and CEO at Dukan Media. I've been co-hosting and running podcasts since the late 2015, and I'm quite excited about this session. I'm going to be moderating it, and I want to welcome a wonderful group of panelists that have a lot to share regarding the changes that we have been experiencing in this landscape over the past few years. So uh, please join me to welcome our panelists. I'd like to start off with coming Ms. Uh, Lemia Sultani from Next Broadcast Media. Also, Ms. Lulu Baz from Conversations with Lulu. And a good old friend of mine, all the way from Jordan, Ramsey George from South. And Chirag Desai, my guy from AMEA FM. And Hussein Belevis from SGHA in Morocco. Welcome, welcome. Thanks, guys. All right, so let me get comfortable. So welcome, welcome guys. Um, as I've started off, obviously we're in quite a rapidly changing environment. Um, the growth has been amazing in a very short period of time. We went from a very small landscape with just a few shows to I believe we're in the thousands of podcasts out of the region and it's been an amazing space. We've just heard a conversation about the uh, how to finance it and generating revenues. So. To kind of tap into and shift gears a little bit, I wanted to actually kick off with, uh, let's see, um, <laughs> I'd like to start actually uh, start with you, Lulu. So to kind of carry that conversation, um, is it a viable business to be in podcasting? And if so, um, what I want to understand is are we pandering to a corner of media specifically? And if not, like how do we get there? How do is it that we can get to this point where it is a comfortable, revenue generating system, if you will. Thank you. So uh, is, it a viable, uh, is it a viable business financially? I think, um, I don't think so. Uh, I think there are very, very few people that can make it uh, big in this type of industry. And, uh, and I think also in, in this region, uh, of course we have some breakthroughs, but I think they're more outliers than, than actually the norm. And what is really viable, right, if you, if you speak about financials? So if you talk about the entire uh, podcast industry globally, if you look at revenues globally, it's a billion dollars, uh, which if you think about it, it's, it's really a speck in the ocean in terms of what uh, revenue generating businesses do. So just to give some comparison, like I looked up, for example, what are, what do cable network, uh, what are the revenues of cable, cable network uh, TV, for example? So Fox News makes 900 million uh, in revenues per year, which is almost as much as the entire uh, podcast industry globally. So, uh, so I think we're still we're still in the very early days. I think a lot of the the podcasters don't do it for the money because I think if if you are in it for the money, clearly you're in the clearly clearly you're in the wrong business. Uh, but I think it's nascent, and I think it's a, it's an opportunity for you know for uh, for content creators to be out there and be part of that first wave. I think someone was saying on the panel uh, before that we we are part of the first wave and we are creating this industry in, in this part of the world. Uh, but it's definitely challenging on the on the financial side. I think we we're we're not there yet. Most of the podcasts are self-funded, uh, which means that you either have to do it. Uh, as a project um, and have income from other places or you have to be sitting on uh, a good sum of cash <laughs> where you can actually self-fund it properly. Uh, and I think, you know, okay, a lot of people say it's very easy to, to be a podcaster. You just take your phone or just open uh, YouTube and you can start podcasting. I think it's a lot more than that. There's a lot of work and preparation that goes into a, a decent quality podcast. I spend uh, a lot of hours just deciding on, on which guests I want to host on the show, right? And are they credible or are they not credible? Is what they're saying, uh, does it make sense? Uh, is it the right image for the, for the brand that I'm trying to build? Uh, what are the topics? Research it. If Let's say, because my, my podcast is about technology and, and startups and entrepreneurship. So sometimes I'm hosting someone who talks about crypto, right? I have to understand like the crypto industry. Otherwise, I can't really have a good conversation with them. And someone earlier as well on the panel said that 
there's a big investment in time, and I think we don't we don't mon we don't put a dollar value on that. But our time is actually also very very valuable. So there's a very big investment that has to happen, uh, and the returns uh, until today are are very very slim. So it's fair to say we're still in our infancy stages in that regard, as an o as an industry overall. It's not an opinion; it's a fact. Like yeah. I said, uh, you have a total a global uh, industry uh, that generates a billion dollars in revenue. So it's 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 a fact. No, I I, I totally agree. Um, anybody wants to add anything? You guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, she stated the fact. So yeah. Yeah. She dropped in the numbers. Everybody like, yeah. well, all right, cool. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Chirag, I mean, question for you, um, to shift gears a little, because I know you've been dabbling in this for quite a while. Um, what do you think is probably the most important tech or practice in podcasting today that you guys have been deploying? Yeah, I was having to think about this. I, I think actually what it is is what is the fundamental of podcasting, which is a decentralized medium, I think. So it's both a tech thing and a philosophical thing almost, right? Um, the fact that it's built on RSS, so if you look at... A lot of times this conversation gets driven into the players. So yes, we have Apple, Spotify, and Gami's here as well. Uh, but if you look at the entire tech stack, it is an extremely decentralized medium, right? So you have celebrities like Ganesh Bakash and Big Hass who are podcasting. You have funded companies like Kerning and Rising Giants who are here, companies like yours. And mine, we actually completed five years this week, which is fun. Congrats. Um, and so, you know, just independent companies who are who are doing work in podcasting, either me just doing podcasting or you guys doing uh, culture stuff and then bringing it to podcasting. Uh, independent players, as we have on the panel as well. Um, so that that's, you know, from the creator side, we're seeing such variety, right? Uh, the same thing is true for hosting, right? If, I, if we just pull the panel and maybe two, three people from the audience, out of 10 people, we'll find five different hosting providers, right? So I think the fact that anybody can come in, the fact that they can... Uh, build in the medium as we're seeing, at least create, even if financially we're still working through that, the rest of the ecosystem. The fact that that exists allows us to be here. I mean, compared to something like radio where the licensing fees and the equipment fees are such a huge barrier to entry, right? So for me, that's really the core, both tech and the, and the medium itself um, allows for this creation. And to that, is there something innovative um, within that space that you guys have been testing or experimenting or playing around? Yeah, with? so we, we've been looking a lot at uh, what's happening with what's called Podcasting 2.0, which is the expansion of this namespace into other areas. So for example, uh, today, you, I mean, this exists, but all the players don't have it yet, and it's something that will take maybe a couple of years to come down, but you could tag an episode with a location, mm -hmm. right? So that allows listeners tomorrow to come into the player, say, show me all the shows ab that talk about Karama. I mean, it doesn't even have to be city level, right? Um, so these are these are some of the expansions that are happening right now. This conversation is happening right now. A lot of podcasters putting their heads together to see what's the best way to do this. Uh, look at payments, right? So or micro payments directly from the audience back to the uh, back to the creator. Uh, so there's a lot of expansion that's happening. I think that's super interesting for us. I think it also kind of goes back to that decentralized space where you have an independent player coming in and trying to expand the the namespace. So I think this is, these are all interesting things, right? This It allows for us to create this way and innovate this way. Uh, I appreciate that. I really like that. Um, to keep it on the topic of innovation, uh, let me. I know obviously you occupy slightly a different space, but obviously within the podcasting ecosystem, um, what innovative solutions that we need? So obviously because, you know, the Western world, if you will, the U.S. is in the U.K., so we've been doing this a little longer than we have, um, there's a bit of a gap. We tend to be known to be a few years behind. Um, what are innovative solutions or something you need to know that can help us actually close this gap a little faster for us to be active participants in changing the landscape? Yeah, um, I think the gap you're talking about is when we look at the time that is spent on, uh, on podcast listening itself and the gap when it comes to monetizing or having brands spending on podcasts. So we know that the global average people spend 31% of their time um, listening to audio content. So that includes music, podcasting as well. Um, there's also a number out there. We know that 8.8% of the total digital spend from, from brands goes into digital audio. So there's a massive gap. Um, this is a global number. Um, I don't know exactly the number, how it is in this region, um, but we know that a lot of brands are interested in podcasting. And just to give you a bit of a background of, of our company, so Next Podcast Media, we work with podcasters, we, uh, we have a marketplace, we are actually the largest 
podcast marketplace in the region to help monetize uh, podcasters via programmatic advertising. Um, I heard a couple of times programmatic advertising is a buzzword. Um, it's, it's growing, and, and especially in the US, uh, we know that programmatic advertising for podcast is as well growing. Um, and for our company, we've been doing that for the last three years. Um, so the, the technology is there. We have the listeners as well. We know that people in this region, they spend more time listening to podcasts with more than one hour compared to the global average with 56 minutes. So in terms of consumption, this region is, up, is ahead. When it comes to brands investing into podcasting or audio content, it might be a bit um, behind, like it was as well with video, programmatic video, programmatic display. This region has been, by default, always a bit behind, but we've been working very closely with the podcasters um, to close that gap, to uh, convince more and more brands to, to about the, the benefits, effectiveness of, of podcast advertising. Um, and yeah, and I think we've been uh, doing a good job so far, but we're still trying to close that gap between 31% and 8.8%. Well, hopefully we can all contribute to that closure. Um, I think as podcasters who've worked with brands, um, I mean, we've been doing that as well, but I'm curious to know, like, when you are talking to brands, is there, how are you guys dealing with that education gap? Like, what have you learned that has worked with them that you feel like is something critical that we should all find ways to deploy ourselves as well? I mean, I think some of the, the the conversations earlier touched on this, but I think it's a there's at least kind of two, three different parties that we have to educate. Part of it's the listeners. Part of it, I think, you know, there's another gap on the content side. Um, there needs to be more Arabic content, um, and then obviously the advertisers and the the marketplace. So I think if you look at that trifecta in different ways, that there's still a lot of education uh, to be done. But I w I would also I would also argue that the amount of Arabic content, um, you know, if you just look again at global numbers out of, let's say, 2.5 million podcasts, you know, less than 1% are in Arabic. Um, so again, we have a huge gap in just the pure numbers of content that's available. Um, and then everything else kind of trails behind that advertising, whether it's programmatic sponsorship, you know, white label or whatnot. But, you know, for us, just kind of on a, on a you know, uh, on a percentage level, about 2% of our revenue is advertising, about 60 to 65% is uh, white label production, and then the rest is different projects and, 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 and whatnot, and, and a very small part of that is subscription. Um, those are things that are growing quickly, but the numbers are still small. Um, so I think you know, there's, a, uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, to to, to uh, some of the other points that were mentioned, I think we're still very early um, in podcasting, there's still, you know, we've been saying that for the last three or four years, but I still think it's true. Um, but I think, you know, there's, the market is extremely fragmented um, from a tech level, from a content level, from an ad, you know, Next Broadcast is probably one of the only, not the largest, but one of the only kind of audio specific markets. Um, and so, you know, Dumtak, we're gonna talk about a little bit later, is still one of the only music podcasts. So there's still a lot of work to be done. And I think that mar market uh, fragmentation um, needs to come together, Th especially in moments of maybe downturn. Hopefully it's not too bad of a downturn, but um, you, know, you see some consolidation of that market. I think that's important, especially in this early, early moment in the history of podcasts. No, definitely. Uh, you guys? Yeah, I, I, what, what I want to add up is that from our perspective in, in Morocco, because there is a, a huge lack of, of podcasts in Morocco, speci specifically now, there is a lot of growth s still going on, but there is a huge gap still. However, from what I see is uh, to, to use also, because you said that there's a lot lack of, of Arabic content, but we try to, to, to have the podcast in English because Morocco is switching and shifting towards the English, from French to English. And that's actually uh, using this, this, this fact that Morocco is switching to focus on this minority of people who are actually looking to learn the new language by uh, exposing themselves to listening more to, to, to people who talk in their accent and their, the way they, they are usually, uh, you know, relate, the people they can, they can relate to. And I think this is something we, we try also to, to, uh, to, to fill the gap with, is just by using a different form of, of languages, because people in Morocco are used to, to, to podcast in Darija, but not in English, and that creates a little bit of the difference also. I think that's very interesting because also that gives access to people that might not understand necessarily Darija or 
you know, um, native... Actually, we had a lot of followers from the U.S. They are not native Moroccans, and they are actually following us to learn the Rija because we, the mix of the Rija and in English makes people actually follow us from other countries, and they, they write us a lot of emails and, and messages saying that, actually, I'm learning a lot of the Rija through you guys. I'm learning a lot about the Moroccan culture and the Arabic culture through you guys because I can understand, finally, someone from the country itself and who is actually giving me the right image, not a Western person coming and giving me this, uh, this image about the country from his own perspective. You are actually the native people, you live there, you are the locals, and you're giving me the proper image about the country. Honestly, I mean, that's awesome, man. Like, that, we, we've had similar experiences, I think, with the kind of well, early days where we would have people reaching out and be like, oh, we didn't know there were Arabs like you that existed. And Absolutely. that sort of was a, a clear indication for us that we wanted to commit to English, at least on the Khan show, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Um, so that, that's awesome. Is there anything else that you guys are testing or experimenting with um, that you're working on at the moment? Well, for us, because we are from, uh, me and my, my, my partner in the podcast, Ayman, we, we are both from, from an arts uh, we have a b an art background. We work a lot in, in, in cinema and, and film industry. So we're actually treating the podcast in a different way. We try, we're treating it as, as, uh, as a, an art piece for us. So we, we try we try in our best not to get a lot of distractions into the frame. So we're actually using also the video part, but we try our best to make it as moody as possible. And we use one camera, a single camera. We have all the capacities to use multiple cameras with all the montage and all these things. But we focus on creating a mood that when you listen to us, you listen. You don't get distracted by the other switches from the cameras or all these other uh, things you do in the post-production. We focus mainly in one lens. You put it there, you're close to us. It's a 35 millimeter lens, you're close to us. You feel like you're having a conversation with us. And then th that's what actually we got from the people. Because even the, mu the music you put, you feel like people are getting into the mood of being with you, having a conversation with you, listening to you. And this is why we always get from the messages that I feel like I'm a, f a friend of you guys because I, I don't feel like there is a distraction between you be that, that you are a higher position than me. I feel like I'm with you, sitting with you on that table, having that cup of tea that you, you actually are guys having. And this is a very nice message we get from the people, and we really appreciate having all these things from the, from the, from the followers. That's amazing. It also makes post-production a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes and no, you know, there is, there is a yes and yeah. no in it. Maybe sometimes, because sometimes you mess up one of the cameras and, you know, oh the yeah. camera, yeah. Uh, on a single cam, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Um, Ramsey, I think to, to switch back to you guys, um, seeing the amazing work that you've been doing with Salt over the past few years and, you know, the growth of audiences. I mean, recently you guys have also um, uh, invested and bought, uh, invested into another podcast network that now is under Salt as well. Like, what is it that you guys have been doing to be able to retain and grow your audiences? And what advice do you have for people within that space? Yeah, I mean, it's been very interesting. I think, you know, we have been exploring new content. Um, you know, I thought the, the debate about video earlier was, was interesting, but almost a mute point. Um, I think, you know, content is content. You know, let the best format work for whatever subject. You know, we have a podcast called I Am it would not work in video very well. Correct. Um, and so we'll stick to audio with that one. Um, and then, you know, we've been experimenting with other, with other things, such as, you know, we were looking at countries and we were looking at different subjects. And we said, you know, there's a big gap in Egyptian comedy. And so, you know, Mohammed Hidmi is here. And we, we worked with him. He was a, lo a lot of fun to work with. Um, he's as funny in real life as he is uh, uh, online. <laughs> He's just over there. He's a big guy. He's hard to miss. So, um, you know, that was really fun to work, and that was something that, you know, helped us really grow audiences in Egypt. You know, the, the, the problem in Egypt is those audiences are, you know, quote-unquote less valuable, so the, the advertising is, is not really up to par there. I think, you know, with the acquisition of Finyal, um, we were really happy. We've had a, a great relationship with them over, you know, many, many years. This opened up an entirely different kind of area. Um, we had been doing narrative storytelling, mostly focused on the real world. This allowed us to kind of look at fiction. Um, it allowed us to look at a lot more creative um, acting, tempthi, and things like that. And it opened up uh, larger audiences in the Gulf. So it was a very kind of um, interesting uh, experiment. Um, and that just closed, you know, last August, so it's only been a few months. Um, and I think, you know, the audience growth has been impressive this year. Um, we're excited. We've, we try to run a tight business as well. Um, so, you know, our costs don't get out of control. And, 
you know, we generate income um, and we try to stay, you know, as positive as possible. And so I think, you know, we're quite bullish. We think there's a lot more to go. Um, like I said, I think there needs to be a little bit more consolidation. I think there just needs to be a lot more content, you know, Egyptian content, you know, more Saudi content. Saudi is probably leading. There's a lot of Saudi content. A lot of it's really good, um, which is fantastic, and there's a long tradition there. But, you know, Morocco, Algeria, uh, Tunisia, um, there's a lot of places that need to, need to kind of, uh, the amount of content there needs to pick up, and I think there's, there's markets there. Um, the economics of scale, the economics of, uh, of size there uh, play an important role, I think. I, I, th I mean, thank you for that. I completely agree. I think it's really interesting, too, as well, because there's something beautiful about the native tongue across the Arab world, the different dialects that every country has to showcase to the world. Um, speaking in your mother tongue, educating people, or even if you try to do it in another language, but also bringing that back and showcasing how that can come to life. You know, we're seeing that through Oman, we're seeing that through Saudi, through Bahrain, from the UAE, what you guys are doing across Egypt and across Jordan as well. So that's really commendable. And then, you know, bringing the, the African, uh, the North Arab, uh, African side of things has been amazing. And being bullish is critical. Like I think we all need to be a bit more bullish with what we stand for and what we represent, but also how we expect to be partnered with, whether with brands or anything like that. You know, I just, sorry, just to follow up on yeah, that. Please. I think it's really important too that there's this, there's this, uh, you know, this uh, kind of uh, old understanding of you have to speak in Fusha or you have to speak in this uh, accent to, under to address this market. I think what we've seen with, you know, Saudi content going everywhere with uh, kind of a Lev Levant, uh, Balad al-Sham uh, accent being able to, you know, be popular in Saudi or in other places, even Moroccan, which is maybe traditionally more difficult to understand for some, some of us, is, you know, becoming more universal. And I think the internet has broken down a little bit of this border, um, these different languages, and I think we have to be very careful. 70% of our audience is from 18 to 44. So there's a very specific audience, and that is not a fusha, you know, classical uh, Arabic audience. So we also need to reinvent our, ourselves. Definitely. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I think as a, as a last question, and also being mindful of time, and this is sort of open to the panel, so whoever would like to go for um, start responding to it. Um, I think as what do we need to do as a region um, in the podcasting space to empower us to stay ahead of the curve? It is rapidly changing. Um, there's a lot that's happening. We've already seen a lot of conversations about it. Some of the questions uh, our fellow uh, media people here that have been asking, like, what are, what are our thoughts about the future and where do we see it headed? But I think as it's headed in some direction, what are the things that we need to do or maybe adopt that can help us stay ahead of that curve? It's something you're at least rise with the curve. Please okay, go ahead. I can give a, a few a few ideas. I think first of all we need some uh, some clarity and transparency. I think, uh, as Ramsey said, the market is very much fragmented. There are so many uh, uh, podcasters out there. I mean, I, I was uh, surprised by the numbers I heard today uh, from some of the podcasts in Saudi Arabia. It's amazing. I think it's really good to to publish these numbers for for the industry's sake and not only for the podcasters but all the other stakeholders, right? So for uh, government, for example, to know that, oh, okay, there's whatever, 20 million people listening to podcasts, for example, or whatever the number is, because I don't know what it is, because that will encourage them to do more, to support this. Uh, also, on the on the revenue side, on the financial side, right, for the advertisers to know, oh, okay, these are not just people having fun, this is actually a serious business. So I think we need some clarity on the numbers, because we, we don't know what the numbers are. Okay, if you get X thousand downloads, is that good? Is that bad? Wh where do you stand? How can you monetize, etc.? So I think clarity and transparency. Um, the other thing, the other thing I think is um, media companies, like the large media companies. So a lot of my friends, I'm, I'm from Lebanon, and I think a lot of you know that uh, the Lebanese mafia, right? There's a lot of Lebanese people in the media industry, and it's very difficult to get their attention as a podcaster. And even though like some CEOs are actually friends of mine, but it's actually difficult to sit with them and say, look, would you just put my podcast as part of your media plan? And to them, it's just insignificant. So it, 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 they don't bother. So I think there's also a responsibility from the media industry and the media companies, uh, the advertising uh, agencies, uh, to basically uh, allocate whether you want to call it CSR or whatever you want to call it, but just to have some kind of budget basically allocated for these new mediums uh, 
I think it would be good because it's very difficult unless you have uh, a network like Ramsey where he can go in and say, okay, we have 15 shows or 20 shows. It's very difficult for an individual podcaster to, to go out there and uh, get money. Um, and I think the third point would be mentorship. So um, there's a lot of, I think, a few successful, really successful podcasters here in the region. And I think it'll be great to learn from them uh, as, as mentors. As a startup, I'm a, I'm a startup founder. I'm a tech startup founder. I had my business for, for 10 years uh, as a tech startup. And what made me successful and what I do is have access to, to mentors, mm -hmm. right? And in the same way where you go out to startup events and you network with investors and with successful entrepreneurs, etc., we need the same thing in this industry because I don't have many people that I can go and learn from. Chirag, do you have something? Yeah, I, I mean, to add to all of this as well, I think something that Ramsey said earlier is the education piece, but I think the education piece is multiple layers, right? So I think as podcasters, we need to learn more about content, uh, different forms, different ways, understanding audiences. I mean, these are these are complex things that take a lot of time to do. Uh, brands need to be educated, right? And we're not only in, in the advertising space, but even the white label space. I mean, we're working with a lot of brands, and that, that's the struggle. They, they don't understand the medium at all, and so it's, it's a long education process of helping them understand why there's value in it, even if it's not one download is going to give me a lead, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I think for me, that's where really that's what needs to happen. We need to expand all of these across the chain. And it's, it, these things take time, uh, a lot of effort, right? And each of us finding our niche in the sense we've decided, okay, this is the education we're going to spend on. Uh, I mean, this event is great. Like, we get to meet other podcasters. Uh, we have podcast-focused initiatives that help us grow. Uh, but even studying what the region needs, so whether you look at it from a tracker, from reports, whatever, I mean, we, you know, we do this full time, so I sit and study this all the time. But of obviously, that's not what everybody can do, right? An independent podcaster is doing other things. So how do we educate across the chain to expand it? Because 100% uh, brands are coming in, right? Today, podcasting has become, a, I don't want to say buzzword, but it's become a word that a lot of people are talking about. So we, we get contacted by brands all the time to say, I want to do it. But then the process from there to actually having a show that's valuable and makes sense is a long one, right? Uh, and there's a lot of education because they don't understand it. So even we were, we were talking about how do you talk to brands, we, ha we also have to learn that language of saying, it's not like, I have a great show, why aren't you advertising? It's like, okay, how can I make this valuable for you as a brand to come to me, right? Uh, so there's so much to be done there. Um, and you know, we're trying to make small steps. Each of us is doing our part. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it's going to take some time. I mean, we, we c it's not going to be a year or two years. It's probably we're looking at five. All right, Lenny. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, like, when I spoke two years ago to a brand, um, and I talked about podcasts, most of the time I was asked, "What is a podcast?" Um, <laughs> and today, um, the brands they come proactively to us and they want to put um, their ads around podcasts. Um, so there's a massive shift happening, especially since COVID, when people, um, yeah, suddenly started to listen to more podcasts. Um, and then, um, especially when people driving to work did not, well, did they, they did not drive anymore to work listening to the radio. So everyone shifted from, from radio to what's podcasting and consuming other additional audio content. Um, and um, yeah, and it reminds me kind of of a time in 2014 when people used to watch TV, offline TV. And then suddenly a shift happened. People started to watch online videos, YouTube, um, Netflix came on. So video content was consumed on demand. And something similar is happening right now with audio content. So no one turns on the radio in the, mor in the morning and listens to, to radio, right? Or may I ask who in this uh, room has a radio at home? At home, yes. Radio yes. <laughs> okay, so I see three people. Does the car radio yeah. come? I've got uh, an antique. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like, one yes, exactly. Like antique pretty ones. Exactly. So in the last few years, I think there was one person who told us um, that they have a radio at home, but it was for decoration purposes. But other than that, um, I think the only time when we listen to, to the radio is probably in the car. Um, and so there's a massive shift happening at the moment where people don't, are not anymore stuck to, to a device, but they consume audio content on demand wherever they are, whenever they feel like. Um, and yeah, m podcast might be the, new ra the, the, the next radio, the next radio on demand in a couple of years. Um, and the same is happening with, with the brand spend, with the advertising spend. So um, it didn't happen from one day to the next when TV budgets moved, moved towards uh, YouTube. So it all took some time. And I think right now we're in the same um, stage where yeah. brands are slowly moving uh, 
Yeah, definitely. That, that I think, yeah, we are. We're definitely at the cusp of change uh, once again. Um, and it seems like the theme here has been a lot about programmatic advertising, but also there is a language that we need to have when we're talking to brands and to be able to teach brands that language, but also and how to be able to get their money, but also educating the businesses on white labeling and also educating them on how to actually advertise their work better with podcasters so there's an education space there's a language and a native language originality space that we're definitely occupying and we're at that we're in the eye of the storm of that change and i think the future if i have to say personally looks very bright um for some of us have been podcasting for a while we've seen the earlier struggles and with every growth there are new challenges and whenever there are challenges i always like to believe that the other side of that is going to look a lot brighter until we see the next one so I wanted to thank you guys for your time and sharing thank and you. Thank you know you. sharing space with us today. Thank you. And thank you for being part of this with us.